Hey YouTubers and subscribers, uh, sorry it's been so long since my last post, uh, basketball season's in full effect now, so that takes up quite a bit of my time. A lot of you have been asking for some inbound plays against a 2-3 zone, so uh, here's four plays for you. The first play is one of my favorites. We call this play Overload, or MK, depending on the team that I'm coaching at the time. We usually get an open shot off this play, and sometimes even a wide open layup. Here we are with an out-of-bounds throw-in under our own basket. You want your 4 and 5 players to set up double stacked outside the key and facing the baseline. Your 2 guard is positioned outside the key opposite from the ball and just above the stack. Your point guard in safety is positioned at the top of the key. A key teaching point here is that your 2, 4, and 5 player should face the baseline until the play starts. This will help to keep the defenders more concerned with defending the paint. On go, your 4 and 5 players will turn towards the key to set a double screen, shoulder to shoulder. The two guard will run across the key looking and calling for the ball as the player out of bounds tracks him with his eyes. Your safety moves to get a good line of sight with the ball for a safe outlet. Before the inbound play starts, your inbounder needs to read the two interior defenders closest to the stack. If your two guard comes off the double screen and no defender comes out, the entry pass should be made for an open shot. This almost never happens because as soon as the 4 and 5 players turn to set the double screen, it alerts the defense to the direction we're looking to pass the ball. However, it's good to teach your players to be aware of this scenario. What usually happens after the double screen is, the bottom defender will rotate out to cover the pass. When this happens, your 5 player will move to set a second screen on the middle defender as your 4 player moves behind to receive the pass for an open shot. This pass needs to be delivered almost as soon as the second screen is set. Key teaching points here are for your inbounder and stack screeners. After the double screen is set, the bottom screener needs to take up all the distance between him and the middle defender. The inbounder and scorer also need to recognize where the second screen will be set and move to get the closest shot. Sometimes this will be a layup right behind the second screen. Now if the middle defender rotates over so there is no distance between him and the bottom screener, your inbounder and scorer both need to recognize this. The scorer should pop out a little to receive the pass. The second inbound play is fairly simple. It's great if you have taller players and a solid post player who knows how to screen then seal their defender really well. Here we are again with an inbound under our own basket against the 2-3 zone. You want your 2 and 5 players on the blocks outside the key and your 4 players slightly higher in the paint. Your point guard as a safety at the top of the key. It's important that your best post player is in the 5 spot and a taller player who can catch and shoot without coming down is in the 4 spot. Your first look out of this play is the lob over the top. Both the inbounder and the 4 player need to read these two interior defenders. Often these defenders will be facing away from the ball and unaware of a potential lob. Some sort of eye contact and understanding needs to be made between the four player and the inbounder. This pass should be made high and close to the rim with enough air under it so the four player can go up, catch, and shoot without coming down. As this is a difficult pass and shot, it should be practiced often if you think you may use this option. Now if the lob isn't open or you don't intend to use that option, here are the actions triggered by the inbounder. On go, the two guard moves out to the short corner calling for the ball. The point guard moves to get a good line of sight with the ball for a safety outlet. The five player moves to set a screen on the four player's defender as the four player moves to the other short corner on the ball side. The inbounder should track the four player with his eyes as he comes off the screen. It's very important that the four player be patient and wait for the screen to be set before moving. If your four player doesn't move before the screen is set, that's good. If he can draw his defender in the opposite direction before his cut, that's even better. The four player needs to cut hard and ask for the ball to draw the other defender away from the basket. The inbounder tracking with his eyes will help draw this defender out. What you're looking for is a quick seal from the five player for a reverse layup. This is why you want your best post player in this position. 
This 5 player needs to be able to screen and seal very well. A good seal may be a reverse pivot towards the top of the key or to the baseline, depending on how the defender is trying to get around. You should practice both scenarios with a reverse layup finish. Here's a look at this play with a more realistic timing. The next baseline inbound play is great if you have a good spot up shooter. This is a simple play that you can run against a compact 2-3 zone. It's not that difficult to figure out after you've run it once or twice, and since there's really only one scoring option, don't expect to run this several times throughout a game. We set up for this play with a stack well outside the key and above the block on the ball side. This play is set up for an outside shot so you want your best shooter in the third position in the stack. This odd formation will cause the defense to shift over a bit towards the stack. On go, the first, second, and fourth players lined up in the stack will move toward the key to set screens on each of the outer three defenders. Your shooter should move out into this open area to receive the pass. Key teaching point here is to have the screeners position their backs correctly towards the open area as to not allow their defenders to get by easily. Here's a look at the play with the defense remaining close to the basket. If the defense is really playing off the stack, you want to teach your players to take up all the distance on their screens. Your shooter may not even have to move in this scenario and may wind up with a closer shot. Here the defense is rotated out pretty far and your shooter has to pop out to receive the pass. In this scenario, a defender has moved out in front of the stack. Again, it's important for each person in the stack to set the screen with their backs towards the area where the shooter will receive the pass. Another scenario you'll want to prepare for is if a defender moves to the opposite side of the stack and above the first player in the stack. It takes too long and is nearly impossible for the first player to move backwards to set the screen. Instead, the second player in the stack will screen that defender and the first and fourth players will move toward the players near the paint. The entry pass here may need to be a lob over the defender. The fourth and last inbound play is again designed for a spot up shot. This is a simple play but difficult to execute if you don't have good passers in the 4 and 5 position who can make a strong and accurate skip pass over and across the court. Here we set up with our four players across the free throw line extended, two at the elbows and two outside the three point line. You want your best shooter to inbound the ball and the two outer players, usually the four and five, should be tall enough to see and pass over the top of several players. Again, I don't recommend running this play if you're not confident with your skip passing. On go, the 3 and 4 players move down towards the baseline at an angle and calling for the ball. This angle is important for the next phase of this play. You should have no problem inbounding the ball to the 4 player against a 2-3 zone. Once the inbound pass is received, the 4 player will make a strong skip pass over the top to the 5 player. Once the 5 player receives the pass, he needs to assume a triple threat position in order for the defense to rotate over. With a skip pass, all five defensive players will turn to look and rotate towards the ball. After the first skip pass is made, the three and four players need to wait until the defense has turned to look at the ball. Then they will set a cross back screen as the inbounder moves into the open position behind the screeners. When the back screens are set and the inbounder has moved into position, a second skip pass is made for an open shot. It's important that the two back screeners are one step away from their defenders when setting their screens. Hey everyone, I just want to wish you success if you're going to use any of these inbound plays and apologize for the monotone voice throughout the videos. I just try to speak clearly so you can understand. And once again, just to clarify, these aren't plays that I've made up myself but have acquired throughout the years as both a player, coach, and official. Uh, the responses from my posts have been great. I'm sorry I can't put them out any faster. Uh, it does take quite a long time to develop even just 5 minutes of video for you. A lot of you have been asking what software I'm using for this. Uh, I use Keynote, which is Apple's version of PowerPoint, if you're familiar, for the animation. 
Uh, for the audio layer, I use both GarageBand and iTunes, uh, both Apple products. It takes a long time because I first create the animation, uh, then record the audio, then make any adjustments to the timing. Uh, so you can see it takes uh, quite a long time. Uh, thanks for all the great comments. Uh, I'm completely open to any suggestions for improvements you may have. Uh, I'd also like to hear about your successes with any of the plays you've used. Uh, I think the next post is going to be either an offense to run against a 2-3 zone or a zone and man-to-man -man press break. So uh, if you have any opinion on which you'd like to see first, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this post. More videos to come, so stay tuned, subscribe, and have a great season.